Okay, this one's about uh, setting up for recovery with a recovery machine. Okay, uh, let's check what the what I've done with the hoses. I've got a process hose right here coming from, and it doesn't make any difference which valve in the tank, the valve is closed, and it goes to the outlet here of the recovery machine. Now, all my valves are open. There's two valves in this thing. There's also a recover and purge valve. It's in the recovery position. And so these are both open. So we refrigerant can go all the way through this thing. Another thing I wanted to note, we have a dryer here. Okay, you can get dryers that actually fit right here. They have a male on one end, a female on the other. And you can use those. The problem is, I've had those where they got bashed around and damaged the machine. So I tend to want to use this kind here, and that's just a quarter inch 052 dryer. And uh, it protects the recovery machine. Keeps too much crap from getting into it. Okay, let's look at the unit we're going to recover from. Okay, I've got the, the gauge set set up, and I'm showing 80.6 and 80.9 PSIG. Uh, that's about right. The saturator is 47. That's about the temperature in here now. And I've hooked up to the high side and low side of the unit that we're recovering from. Now, a little bit of backstory here. This unit, I'm using it because everything's here. This is a, you know, it's a package unit. Let's look quick at where we uh, put our hoses. Now, in this case, the blue line, that's the low side, is going to the dryer because there's a tap on the dryer. Okay? This valve here on the line is open. And the high side... I've run over here to one of the small lines. Now this is actually a discharge line here and there's a tap on it. Sometimes a little hard to tell which is which, but generally low side is going to be large line, high side is going to be small line. Okay, so that's all hooked up. There's pressure. We know there's pressure in there because back to the gauge set, we're showing a pressure in it. Okay. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to bleed this entire system. Now, let's get to where we can get in everything in here, much as possible anyway. Now, what I want to do is I want to start from high pressure and go to low pressure. So, because I know I have high pressure and these lines down here, these two lines here, because these valves are off, I need to bleed this entire system clear up to the recovery cylinder. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to open this valve, and then I'm going to open this valve. That takes the pressure that was in these two lines and in the system and puts it on the process tube. Now the process tube comes up here, goes through this dryer, into the machine. Both of these valves are open. And then it goes to the recovery machine or the uh, recovery cylinder. Okay, one thing I wanted to note, I'm up here at the recovery machine. And as soon as I opened those two valves on the manifold gauge set, the pressure went up here. So I know everything's moving. Okay, so now I have pressure in all these lines right up to here. Okay? So I want to bleed this entire setup. Because there's air in this line.
There's air in the recovery machine. There's air in the lines and the manifold gauge set and in the hoses right up to there. Okay? So I put pressure on them and I want to bleed everything at once. So how do I do that? Without opening this valve, I'm going to bleed here. Now because I have a lot of things to bleed, I have the recovery machine, the manifold gauge set, the dryer and all the hoses, it's going to be a three or four second bleed. Okay, at this point everything should be bled right up to here. Now am I ready? to start. Well not quite. Let's go back to the uh, unit that we're going to recover from. Because most of our refrigerant that's going to come out of this thing is going to be in a gaseous state. Because it's been sitting here, it's actually been sitting with power off for a long time. Okay, I'm going to turn on the indoor fan. Now that's a fan that blows across the indoor coil. Now because this is a water-cooled unit, I can't run a fan like I could with an outdoor unit. If I had an outdoor unit on this thing, I would disconnect the compressor, but I would start the fan in the outdoor unit. So this simply means I would disconnect the wiring for the compressor, and I would turn on the fan, uh, turn on the unit, and then the fan would come on. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to show it to you because it's a mess in here, is there's a, an R and a G on the terminal board on this unit and I have jumpered R to G so when I put power to this thing it's going to turn on the fan. Now why am I turning on these fans? The reason these fans are on is because if I blow air across them and I'm evaporating refrigerant out of this thing as the recovery machine works then the coils are going to get cold. As the coils get cold, less and less refrigerant is evaporated off. So I'm just trying to warm the coils up a little bit. Now in this case I've got a water-cooled condenser and if it wasn't for the fact that this thing only has about two pounds of refrigerant in it, I would want the water available on this and I'd try to bypass the water valve or something to get water running through here so I did not freeze this thing up because you could freeze it up if you had a fairly large charge. Okay, what I'm pointing to, by the way, is the water-cooled condenser. So I'm ready to start my recovery machine with one exception. Okay, now my, my recovery cylinder is sitting here. This valve's closed, and the hose is hooked up. You might notice I put the... Uh, cylinder on a scale and zeroed out the scale okay I've zeroed out the scale I uh, might also notice if you look closer I put the total weight of this cylinder should be with 80 percent full it's like 17 pounds uh, for the cylinder and 24 pounds is 80 percent of 30 pounds because 30 pound cylinder so it's marked on there so that the total weight of the cylinder should never exceed 41 okay so why have I got the scale on it now the reason is whenever I decide I want to pull refrigerant out of a unit I want to know how much I pulled out the reason that's important, I may be replacing this unit, I could be repairing the unit. The unit may not be operable when I come on to it. So when I pull the refrigerant out, I want to know how much I pulled out. And then I'll compare that to how much it's supposed to have in it. That tells me that maybe the unit has a leak, you know, something like that. I don't know. But what I want to do is I, whenever I move refrigerant from one place to another, it's on a scale. 
It's simple to do, it's quick, set it up and go. So, this unit is just about ready to uh, recover refrigerant. Okay, you might note <clears throat> I pulled about five ounces out of this thing uh, just because I had a vacuum in this cylinder. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this thing up. All my valves are open. I'm ready to go. Now remember, I'm going to turn the fan on on the machine to warm up the coils. Okay, here we go. It's starting to pull refrigerant out. Easiest to see on the gauge set here. Pressure drops. You can tell that you're moving refrigerant out of the system. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, scale. We're one pound. You can get an idea of how fast this is going to move refrigerant. Like we're getting down about 25. The high side is going to be, this is a condenser, remember, it's going to be at a higher pressure. It's going to be at condensing pressure. So this is going to keep dropping down. Okay, while this is going on, I wanted to note something. If you know the unit has a fairly large leak, but still has refrigerant in it, do not bring it below zero PSIG. When it's hit zero PSIG, you're done. Otherwise, you're going to just suck air into your recovery cylinder. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off the recovery machine by the valve, the blue valve right here. I'm going to shut it off and then shut the machine down and we're going to check that against the manifold gauge set reading. Let's take a look at those. Okay, we're showing about minus 0.4 PSIG. So let's go ahead and shut that off. What I'm going to be doing here is waiting to see if I get an increase in pressure. Okay, my uh, pump, the uh, recovery machine is already shut off. Let's see if we get an increase in pressure. Okay, looking at this pressure difference, it's been quite a while and there's not been an appreciable rise in pressure. So I've pretty much got all the refrigerant out of this thing I'm going to get. Okay, my recovery machine is shut off by itself. The next thing I'm going to do, well, first let's take a look at how much refrigerant we got out. Okay, we took out three pounds and four ounces. Okay, the charge for this unit is two pound, 2.4 pounds. So, that's probably about six ounces. Is this, was this unit overcharged? Well, it really was not overcharged. It had a uh, liquid line dryer put on, an oversized liquid line dryer, and they take about 14 ounces, 14 and a half, I think, ounces. So uh, this thing is not terribly overcharged. However, we've got one more thing to do, and it's going to add to the charge. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to purge this machine because this is a condensing unit. It's got liquid refrigerant in the condenser. When I purge it, I'm going to pull that liquid 
refrigerant out and pump it straight into the cylinder over here and uh, so let's do that okay now we're gonna go ahead and purge this thing remember this is a condensing unit so there's liquid refrigerant in it. when I purge it I'm gonna suck that liquid refrigerant out and put it over here in the cylinder so I turn this valve here from open to purge this one to purge now watch your gauges on the, on the unit now you see that one's going way down the low side going way down and it shut off okay you're done Close all your valves. Usually go back to recover. And let's see the total amount of refrigerant we took out of this. Okay, once we've purged, you can see we've moved a little bit more refrigerant out of this. This thing might have been a little bit overcharged because I'm getting close to four pounds. But now, Let's kind of summarize what we did here. Okay, with our gauge set on, we hooked up, we put all of our lines up to the recovery machine over to the recovery cylinder. We bled everything out from high pressure to low. That meant there was pressure over here, and with this valve shut off on the recovery machine, there's, uh, you call that low pressure there. So you bleed from high pressure to low. Then you begin your recovery. You wait till you get down. You can wait until the machine shuts off, and that's okay. Or you can take it down, uh, shut off the machine, shut off the valve, and see if the uh, pressure goes back up. If it doesn't go up appreciably, then you can consider your uh, refrigerant has been recovered. Then I'm going to purge this machine. So I, I'll go over that once again on the purge because it's pretty quick on it. We're in the open position. We turned down, down here to purge. We took from the recovery position to the purge position. I know you can't see that well. This is already open. So it sucks all the liquid refrigerant out of it and puts it into the cylinder. Uh, and this this manufacturer back rack says this thing uh, uh, only has one tenth of one ounce in it once it's purged. Who knows? Whatever. And the value to having the scale and putting the refrigerant on the scale is fairly obvious at this point. You know exactly what charge is in it. Uh, did it die because it was overcharged? Did it die because it was undercharged? You know, you, you know what's going on there. And if there's any leaks to be addressed, you can deal with them. As long as you know how much refrigerant you pulled out, you've got something to go by. I constantly do this. When I'm working on this stuff, I want all the information I can get. I record stuff everywhere so that I know just exactly what happened okay that's recovery of a refrigeration machine I will come up with a couple more videos on this fast ways to do it uh, fast ways to get started on it things like that